Hey guys, I'm Jared, and today we're talking about what's new in board gaming as of March 5th, 2021. I'll be covering the latest news, announcements, most played games, hot new Kickstarters, and crowdfunded games, and more related to board gaming for the past two weeks. At the end, I'll also be sharing what's going on behind the scenes with my YouTube channel, Meeple Mentor. Leave me a like and comment on what kinds of updates that you want to hear more about. To make sure you don't miss any of my news updates, new video tutorials, and our podcast episodes, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and your preferred streaming platform. The board gaming crowdfunding site GameFound is growing in popularity and in number of campaigns. Fans of the video game Skyrim will be happy to hear it's getting the tabletop treatment. Modifius will be creating the Skyrim board game, which will be fully cooperative for one to four players. Look for the campaign to begin in June. Coming in April to GameFound is the fourth installment in the Hexplorit series called The Domain of Mirza Noctis. These are cooperative sandbox RPGs, and I imagine those who have played any of the first three will be happy to look at this new one. Awaken Realms Light is putting their first creation to the test by starting a campaign on GameFound for their first game, Gaijin. Coming in May, one to four players will struggle to survive and pursue their agendas in two worlds at the same time. Gaijin is an adventure-driven, post-apocalyptic board game with scenarios and characters that can be upgraded and even have body modifications. On the Kickstarter front, the ever-popular and cute game of Root by Leader Games has a new Kickstarter running right now for the Marauder expansion. If you're unfamiliar with Root, it's a strategic war game taking place with furry animals in a forest. Up to four people can play, but the unique thing is each faction has different ways to play and win. The new expansion will bring two new factions, as well as a couple other mini expansion add-on options. A Kickstarter ending on Sunday you may want to get on is for a special version of the Japanese game Shogi. This version will have icons and universal images that help bring more players to the game who are unfamiliar with Japanese culture or their kanji characters. It's a cool, unique, abstract game from Japan that reminds me of Xiangqi or another chess-type variant. The dice drafting game Rome and Roll from last year is running a Kickstarter campaign for an expansion called Gladiators, which extends the game to roll and write with more cards and more features. Designed by David Turksey and Nick Shaw, and plays one to four players in about an hour to an hour and a half. It's already reached its funding goal, and you have until March 14th to join in. The popular deck building game Aeon's End has a Kickstarter going for for another narrative addition to the series. As usual, it can be played on its own or combined with other Aeon's End releases. It's called Legacy of Gravehold and promises to be an epic conclusion to the Aeon's End story since Aeon's End Legacy. There's lots of content packed into this and looks amazing. Aeon's End plays one to four players cooperatively in about an hour per chapter. The campaign ends on the 11th. Another cooperative game on Kickstarter from an established IP is Tiny Epic Dungeons by Gameland Games. One to four players control heroes, gain magic, roll dice, and combat against goblins, minions, and bosses in this miniaturized dungeon crawl game. The dungeon is modular and will be unique each play as tiles are flipped over and paths are discovered. You have until March 17th to join the campaign. A new strategic worker placement game from Hodari Spiel is on Kickstarter called Wutaki. It has some unique and colorful fantasy creature art in it. Tribal leaders send out workers to gather resources to be sacrificed by fulfilling powerful packs in order to appease the giant monster that they worship in the volcano. The game has a bright main board, variable player boards, power cards, and more. You can back this on Kickstarter through March 16th. AEG is rocking a Kickstarter currently for Meeples and Monsters and doing quite well. 
with two weeks left and from the designer of Champions of Midgard, use your meeples to gain allies from the townsfolk, upgrade the town, fight enemies outside town, and more. This is a solid bag building game with tons of colorful and screen printed meeples. The game is for one to four players ages 13 and up and plays in 45 to 60 minutes. For my solo gaming friends, you should definitely be looking at the Kickstarter Batman The Dark Knight Returns The Game. You can play standalone missions or in one epic campaign to follow a story structure based on the graphic novel of the same name. In fact, much of the art by Frank Miller will be in the game's art. The game is jam-packed with custom tokens and dice, cards, and character standees. Plus, if you get the deluxe version, you'll also get 17 miniatures. A game lasts 90 minutes and is recommended for ages 14 and up. Orkonomics 2nd Edition is on Kickstarter right now and has fully funded with five days to go. It's a cutthroat economic game about an orc economy long after the Age of Heroes. Beautiful art and full of color, two to five players will compete to create companies in 10 industrial sectors. Ares Games has funded it already, but you can pledge for $49 to get the premium edition. In board game industry news, we've seen several big announcements. First, Capstone Games has some distribution news. They've cut three of their distributors, Southern Hobby, Peach State Hobby Distribution, and GTS Distribution. Now, they've announced an exclusive distribution deal with ACD Distribution and Alliance Game Distributors. The hope is that this will streamline their distribution network and allow them to build a stronger supply chain. A new business agreement announcement came from Alderac Entertainment Group, or AEG as it's known. They have worked out a production and sales contract with Flat Out Games to bring their game Cascadia to a bigger audience. With AEG's help, Cascadia will be available worldwide via hobby retailers. Now let's talk about Hasbro, who recently had an investor day and made several announcements. Hasbro will be creating movies for some of their properties like Dungeons and Dragons, which will star Chris Pine. Transformers will be getting a new animated movie, a 20 episode animated comedy series on Netflix, and another animated series exclusive to Nickelodeon. G.I. Joe and the Risk board game are both getting the episodic treatment, as each will have scripted shows coming later this year. Wizards of the Coast is owned by Hasbro, as you know, but did you know its sales has grown so much that it is now more profitable than Hasbro's toys and other consumer products? It made $816 million in sales last year. They've decided to separate out Wizards of the Coast and digital gaming as its own segment for financials and reporting. You'll even see their revamped logo for Wizards of the Coast. Clearly, Hasbro is moving more towards geek gaming than toy manufacturing. Of course, there are plenty new Magic the Gathering sets and related content coming as well. In some disappointing news, the San Diego Comic-Con is canceled this year. A virtual event will be scheduled as a three-day event July 23rd through 25th. All of this is once again due to the COVID impacts and danger of gathering large crowds. One of my favorite games, and maybe the favorite worker placement game, Everdell, is coming out with some new content this year. Two new expansions were announced by Starling Games, New Leaf and Mistwood. New Leaf will add new critters, construction cards, events, and all new visitor cards. It comes with a new game board to attach to the right side of the main Everdell board, which brings visitors via a critter train station. The Mistwood expansion brings a villainous critter named Nightweave who wants to take over Everdell. Nightweave can operate as an automated player to be included included with player counts of 1, 2, or 3. I'm excited about these, but maybe even more so for the big box announcement. The Everdell Complete Collection will also be coming out to include all the expansions available with the game, including these two new ones. Keep an eye on the Starling Games website to find out more details. 
As a cinephile and fan of horror movies, Alien is one of my all-time favorite movies. I'm so excited to say that Alien will be getting a cooperative survival board game from Ravensburger this August. It's called Alien Fate of the Nostromo, so will be based on the first Alien movie and characters. Keep up morale while finding a way to escape. You'll be able to gather scrap materials and other supplies to craft items to complete objectives. Science Officer Ash can also be added to the game to add some additional challenge to work against. It will be for 1-5 to five players and will retail for $29.99. The game designers Tom Jolly and Luke Laurie, who made Manhattan Project Energy Empire, are releasing a new game this month called Cryo. For 2-4 to four players, become marooned on a cold, empty planet after your colonization mission failed. Each faction will need to fight to establish a new home among the limited resources and locations in this inhospitable environment. Primarily a worker placement and hand management game, it'll be released by Z-Man Games. The popular Summoner Wars from Plaid Hat Games is getting a second edition this May, which will be an upgraded version of the initial release. New factions will be added in addition to keeping the originals and will have new artwork and graphics for better gameplay interface for two players and retails for $50. Renegade Game Studios revealed an upcoming expansion for Embarcadero called Unsinkable. Coming out next month, expect to find three new game modules, added fifth player, and a focus on the Gold Rush times in San Francisco. The game plays in one to two hours, and the expansion will sell for $20. Also from Renegade, check out a new edition for Gravwell Escape from the Ninth Dimension, just announced. It's a beautiful game for one to four players, but now with the second edition you can play with up to six. Players each control spaceships that were trapped in a black hole. Find your way and use tractor or repulsor beams to jettison out while making sure you've collected enough fuel and supplies from nearby asteroids. The game can be pre-ordered now and is expected to come out this June. Yellow has announced five new board games to come by the end of the summer. A reskin of Biblios called For the King and Me is coming, which allows up to five players instead of four. A spin-off of Sticky Chameleon called Sticky Cthulhu will be out this spring, which plays three to eight players and is about catching and eating cultists and trying to make everyone else go insane. Catapult Feud from Christian Fosch is a two-player game about two kingdoms fighting each other with catapults. Little Factory is a resource management game for two to four players from the same designers of Little Town, and a Reiner Knizia two-player only game called Royal Visit is getting reprinted. It's kind of a tug-of-war game to pull the king to you and gain status. From Kyope Games, check out their new game Enchanted Plumes about magical peacocks. It's a card collecting game where cards must be arranged in rows according to the rows and other rules for two to six players and plays in 20 minutes. Expected to release later this year for $15. Lastly, the game world is a buzz about Sleeping Gods from Red Raven Games. This is the latest of Ryan Laucut's games and a series of very successful narrative storytelling games like Near and Far. Set in 1929, become the captain of the steamship Manticore and explore a strange new world plays one to four players and each game session plays in about an hour. While there's no date yet, it will be released this year for $84.99. The Meeple Mentor channel is part of the board game community, The Gateway Network, made up of great upcoming board game content creators. In this segment, I'll highlight one of the other great content creators part of the network. This week, we're talking about the Super Board Sunday crew. Superboard Sunday is four buddies that thought, hey, you know what the world needs? Another board game podcast. Let's get to know them. Brian, the beer guy and solo game guru, Jim, the rabbit's foot of the crew and the wheeler and dealer of the group, Christian, the West Coast defector with all the animals and creator of the putover, and Frankie, the temperamental ginger kid with designer aspirations. 
Tune in for all kinds of game talk, train breaks, and horrible ukulele playing. Super Bored Sunday, where every day is game day. Upcoming, the crew will be involved in various ways in the Granite Game Summit's virtual convention and is scheduled March 12th through 15th. I've included a link to their podcast on podbean.com, so check them out. Find them on Instagram and YouTube as Super Bored Sunday. Go to thegatewaynetwork.com or check out the Gateway Network's Instagram to see more. On the Meeple Mentor YouTube channel in the past two weeks, I released a tutorial for Stonemeyer Games' Euphoria Build a Better Dystopia and announced the giveaway winner for Santorini and Game of Ham. Our last podcast episode was on the top 10 gateway games we recommend to introduce to new players. We had fun with that and didn't have many crossovers. I always like when we have different picks, so there's more games for people to hear about. Coming up soon on the channel is the tutorial for Dinogenics, which will include the expansion Controlled Chaos. I'm working hard currently on Lost Ruins of Arnak and Darkest Night. We'll see which one of these three comes out first. Kind of depends on how much time I have to film close-ups for Arnak and Darkest Night. Today, I launched a new giveaway for a free copy of Hadrian's Wall from Garp Hill Games. I'm including the link to the contest in the description on YouTube. Additionally, another giveaway will be going on later this month via my Instagram. So if you want to be included in that, you'll need to follow me there. My Instagram is at MeepleMentor easy to remember. And that will be out on March 22nd, I believe, so stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to today's news update. I do appreciate your support, and remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.